Hello everyone. So today's October 4th and as you may recall from about two weeks ago, Sony announced an event for today called Try PlayStation 5 as part of the YouTube Gaming Week in Japan. This is where they would give access to PS5 hardware to some Japanese YouTubers, also the press, and that's what happened. We learned a fair amount of things today, nothing too crazy. I think most importantly we actually got to see the console and some high quality shots and video. That's great. No UI unfortunately. However, we did have some leaks come out recently over the weekend that we can talk about, so we'll we'll go over everything. Now, if you do recall when we talked about the original announcement of this event about two weeks ago during a Let's Talk PlayStation episode, I did say, look, it's Japan, there's nothing wrong with that, it's a big market that's very important for Sony, just that, well, if we see major substantial news, it's not going to come out of there, it's got to come out of uh, the US PlayStation channels, their, their Twitter, the main PlayStation blog that will go out to everybody, so I wouldn't expect UI or anything like that, either that information would come before this date, which it didn't, or we'd see more of the same, and on the surface, that is actually what we got. Uh, the Japanese YouTubers had access to Astro's Playroom, Godfall, uh, Devil May Cry, just a lot of gameplay for that, and that's really more of the same. They talked a little bit about the uh, sensations of the DualSense controller, but if you really pick through all of this, and certainly some of the articles that followed up, this is where we learn a lot more about the platform, and obviously the, the cool thing is to really see the, the console itself close up in all these high quality shots, but let's go over everything so far. So. Obviously, the console itself, right? We get to see it in a more formal setting. Uh, if you didn't know, that centerpiece right there is very glossy. And uh, the system is quite large. We went over the dimensions, I think, one or two weeks ago as well. The official dimensions are out, so if you got a tape measure, you can figure out how large this thing really is. There's some AR apps out there floating around to place the console in your home, and a lot of them are really getting the mark wrong, and some people think that they're actually genuine. That's not the case. The system's not that massive, but yes, it's still quite large, and so you might have to con consider that for your particular play area. But anyway, a few channels took the time to really take a close up look at it on video and for some of these high quality shots the images are from 4gamer.net also Dengeki Online and Famitsu so no UI like we mentioned there this is a very controlled setting Famitsu even confirmed they didn't even get a chance to experience it uh, it was very much Sony Interactive Entertainment handling this from all aspects of where this was filmed how the games were presented now they got to play the games of course just that that portion was not ready to be displayed obviously but anyway, the access here was playing Astro's Playroom, Godfall, DMC5, and one thing I'm seeing a lot of people question initially about the footage that we're seeing is that are those PS5 units on the desk or really that one singular console? Is that a dummy unit? Doesn't look like it's on or anything like that. Are they actually playing games on that hardware? So they actually are. It is plugged in. You can see that from certain angles. But the reason why you're not seeing any indicator lights on the system like a PlayStation 4 is because it just is like a PlayStation 4. I think we're all getting caught up in the ambient blue light that we constantly see in the product shots. But this is just like a PlayStation 4 in that that's only during a boot up or shutdown. In operation it's a white light now if you look at the setting it's overly exposed in white and the console itself is white and so you're not gonna see that backlight against the white shell of the console you'd have to be in a very dark room actually to probably get that small little bit of light pollution but from certain shots you can actually see that the light is uh, not as prominent and it can pulsate with intensity so during operation, that's probably set on the, the lowest setting possible, so it really doesn't create any light pollution if you do, for example, play your PlayStation 5 in a dark room, which is nice. You don't really want this thing to be glowing from the, the center of your room. Speaking of lights, we did get to see how the DualSense signifies and handles multiple players. So, for example, with DualShock 4, we know that we have different color changes, right? Now, that's kind of the same deal here. You'll get different color changes. Um, on the backlight portion of that uh, touchpad but on the bottom of the touchpad you see that one white led and we've seen this previously you'll actually get two of those for player two three for player three four for player four that's how dual sense is going to handle different uh, players and color changes are also expected there as well the dual sense button presses are apparently very quiet now this is good considering there is a mic directly on the controller if you don't know there is a microphone there, and the last that we really heard about this microphone on the DualSense was initial concerns of, okay, well, you could use this, it may not be ideal, but if you do use it, this might be very intrusive to the person on the listening end of it, right, because they're just going to hear you mashing buttons on the controller, and what we heard is that the mic is actually directional, it's more focused on 
zeroing in on your voice and avoiding all other unintended noises and things like that and so i would imagine that that in combo with the fact that the controller might be very quiet just from accepting inputs well that would go a long way with making the mic a lot more usable day to day if you don't want to put on a headset or something like that right it's just going to be more accessible if you don't have a headset available to you right away now for this next detail it might seem very minor to you in all likelihood unless you live in japan or you're used to importing japanese consoles but if you don't know in japan for the history of playstation x and circle are actually swapped not physically on the controller but rather their inputs or what's commonly accepted for their input so here in the west or us europe everywhere else in the world where you can buy a playstation x is commonly go accept forward circle is normally going back or cancel unless we're talking ps2 ps1 where triangle was also commonly used that sometimes trips me up whenever i go back and play those games but anyway circles usually back here in the west well in japan circle is accept or go forward x is going back the big change here is that in japan this will be swapped over to what everywhere else in the world is is used to x being go circle being back and uh again it might not be huge to you because i don't have many japanese viewers or unless you import Japanese consoles, but this is a big change, and I would imagine that uh, Japanese uh, gamers that will play on PlayStation might uh, have a tough time adjusting to that, because even though I have a lot of Japanese systems, and I eh, somewhat irregularly play on them, uh, it always gets annoying. For It's hard, you know, it's a muscle memory thing, you're just so used to it, especially if you've been playing on these consoles for a very long time, so that's actually kind of a big deal. But anyway, going back to the actual games that were demonstrated, this is something where we've seen, it's more of the same, right? So there's not a whole lot that we really learned here, but instant retries, for example, right? We got that fast SSD coming in where whether you die on Astro's uh, Playroom or Godfall, you're right back in the game fairly quickly. So that's good to see in practice, right? I mean, to be fair, we saw a lot of Astro's Playroom and there's so many PlayStation nods in here that I can't wait to go through it. It's really getting me psyched up. But uh, Astro really is that showcase game, remember pre-installed for free on every single PlayStation 5. Some of the impressions we're hearing this time around, just that those different sensations you feel when you're walking on certain material, it's almost immediate of how you can feel it. So whether it's sand, ice, metal, you can tell right away through the haptics of the dual sense. Um, an example in Godfall that I found pretty notable is if you have a shield in your left hand and a sword in your right in game and you block with the left, you feel a vibration or an intensity from just the left side of the controller. And that's interesting to have a, that asymmetric experience. We also heard something like that from, uh, I believe, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, one of the moves you can do in the game will have a sensation that goes from the right to the left. And so that might be interesting in practice. But anyway, the one thing that a lot of people have been waiting to hear about for PS5 is the console's fan noise, operation noise, heat from the machine, and we do have some impressions here, and it seems like it's very good. Now, granted, they didn't have much time to play the console, However, what we're hearing, initially very good, so we have a lot of lengthy quotes to go over here. Now, keep in mind, this is direct Google Translate, so it's going to sound a, a bit off. But the general idea is there, and it gets across fairly well. This one comes from 4gamer.net, where it says, What is the temperature of the main body with the cooling mechanism of PS5? I started playing one of the launch titles, Godfall, and after a while I checked it, but the wind coming out of the exhaust was gentle and it didn't feel extremely hot. At this time, the temperature of the studio was about 30 degrees. From the specifications of the installed SoC, it is considered that it operates at around 55 to 60 degrees. When it comes to that, you might think, isn't the noise so great? But the opposite is true. As mentioned above, the exhaust was gentle, and I could hardly hear what seemed to be the rotating noise of the fan. So what they mentioned there is that the room was uh, 30 degrees Celsius, about 85 Fahrenheit, because of the lighting in the room. That gets very hot when you have large studio lights out. I can attest to that uh, even though it was actually shot in a basement and the way that that's actually phrased because that could get misconstrued he's just trying to get across that you might think this thing would run hot and that you would think it would be very loud but that wasn't the case he goes on further to state i introduced the development machine this time but when i summarized the ps5 that i actually saw the balance between specs appearance and price was strange and it was a finish that made me want to say that it would be too cheap i could only look at the ps5 itself but i'm relieved that the exhaust heat and noise aren't noticeable if anything i was surprised at the good finish of the dual sense now over on av watch we have this quote where it says 
At that point, I notice that the operating noise of the main unit is also very quiet. I forget it because I concentrate during gameplay, but it didn't make a roar when I went near the main unit. The PS4's fan noise became more noticeable as soon as the load increases, but the PS5 impression is less noticeable. Of course, I didn't really focus on fan sound only in a strict environment. Even if you put your ears close to the back of the body, it only sounds like, oh, fans are turning over. Therefore, subjectively, the impression that it has become much quieter is not a mistake. It's also worth noting that 4Gamer.net noticed how when the console's in a vertical orientation, air is going into the top of the system and then it's dissipating from the rear. And actually, if you do look at the top of the console, you can see what looks like those white clips that protrude out. If you remember, we had some pictures leak a while ago with those protruding clips and we had a recent one also alongside those UI leaks that we'll be getting to here in a second. And uh, potentially that might be where you could access removing this thing if you had to for what may be the place where you put in the, uh, the SSD. Again, we don't have any details or confirmation on that right now, just an observation. Well, so far so good, right? Although this was an expectation going into it. It would have been really bad if we had poor results in this area considering that from the Road to PS5 event, we know that this is one of the key principles of PlayStation 5, one of the reasons why it has those variable frequencies for the GPU and CPU, while it may run at the top end pretty much most of the time, when it will dip, that's in relation to a set power limit of the system. This is when Mark Cerny was discussing the problems of something like PlayStation 4 Pro, the ambient temperature of your room, and how that can kick up the fans for the console very easily, and why it was such an issue for that machine throughout all of its life cycle. But with PlayStation 5, despite the ambient temperature of the room, despite however that game is made everybody will have the same the same experience playing through it as if uh you know there's no major difference for the noise operation so that is encouraging to hear but now we're hearing about it uh, from these impressions now as we mentioned no ui and i think we all knew that was going to be the case a formal reveal of the ui will be global and on sony's terms but what we did see just a few days ago some pictures and video leak online of what looks like the playstation 5's ui we got um, about a 20 second clip of the console apparently booting up probably from a complete cold boot so it was uh totally shut down and then you can see it starting up and we get what we saw was the initial boot up that was teased during the uh, see the future event and then some pictures showing what looks like the storage management also possibly just the, the general home screen and from what little that we can see usable storage 664 gigabytes somewhere around there remember some of that's going to get eaten up by the os and ps5 already is slightly lower than the standardized one terabyte size that we see in other products uh, looks like astro's playroom takes up about two gigabytes that's not very large and we know that's just pre-installed it's not a huge deal but um, the other home screen you can see that it looks uh, slightly tiered it's using the same flow and design of what we saw from the C Future event, one of these has a, a cursor in it, so that might tell you that this was a picture on a screen, not necessarily, oh, it's a fake, it's fake right away. It could be a screenshot on a monitor that was then, a photo was taken candidly of it, and they, they always look like UFO sightings, these pictures. But uh, one of them, or in the video we saw that black dual sense prototype, everybody's asking, is it real, is it fake? Um, Here's the thing, we've had UIs pop up the past few months, but they're all concept UIs, they're masquerading as the real deal or a leak, but you can tell a mile away they're not genuine. This looks like the most realistic leak we've had so far for a few reasons. That black prototype DualSense controller, we've actually seen that before and talked about it on Let's Talk PlayStation. The same mismatched buttons, the same shade of black, looks very similar. Of course, the general design of this thing looks similar to the See the Future event teased intro UI, uh, but the one screenshot where it shows uh, the tiered content, so there's an item up top and potentially on the bottom you're looking at uh, screenshots or photo albums or, or whatever that uh, particular item might be. It's one on PlayStation 4 right now. I think that's the capture gallery. Either way, you've got that tiered look, and this is not the first time we've seen this as well. We've actually seen this during the um, the 4chan leaks from a long time ago where it had more of a ps4 dress on it if you will right where it could disguise what is now supposed to be the real look of this user interface right so the general um, navigation of the system was there but not necessarily how it was supposed to be presented and then we had actual patents from sony interactive entertainment now this is directly from sony where it has that same tiered design i even did a video called things people are missing or overlooking about ps5 after that see the future event and we connected the dot there in that video that might be the general look and feel of the ui it's not guaranteed or anything but 
it's the best guess that we have so far and so for something like this uh, particular leak that came out online I know it's easy to look at it and go oh it's fake because it looks like a, <laughs> that standard UFO sighting but uh, I mean out of all the things we've seen so far this one is the most compelling Having said that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.